Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Sona, Maven of the Strings. If this is your first time here for one of my reactions, we're going to go ahead and read the biography and story first for Sona. We'll move on to the gameplay abilities, check out any cinematics, take a look at the skins, and finally end off with the special interactions and voice lines. There's not much I know about Sona specifically other than just like I know of like the DJ Sona for some reason. Maybe it's because of Teamfight Tactics. So I know like Sona is like music related. Other than that, though, I don't really know anything about Sona's abilities or kind of like Sona's background or anything like that. So we're going to be kind of learning a lot with this reaction today. All right, starting off with a quote, and it's actually from Jericho Swain, which is interesting. It says, my spies whisper to me of this Ionian treasure that her melody moves the soul and her silence sunders the body. Interesting. We're getting a quote from Swain. I imagine Swain has spies out for any kind of threats or anything like that, right? Around the realm of Runeterra and things. So the fact that he's got like information on Sona means she is actually like something that's important or a threat or something, right? So that's an interesting thing. All right, we got another support champion that we are reacting to. And then the region is Demacia. So she's Demacian, but she's also Ionian or what is she? She must be like actually Ionian born, but she's living in Demacia. Related champions though, we have Tarek, okay, from Targon. That's weird. We have, is it Xin Xiao? Xin Xiao, I think. And then a Rise. So we have really random related champions, I feel like. A region being Demacia, and then the thing here from Swain saying it's an Ionian person. Uh, I'm getting a lot of mixed results here, so we gotta definitely learn more about Sona. All right, the paragraph says, Sona is a virtuoso of the stringed etwal, speaking only through her graceful chords and vibrant areas. Her genteel manner has endeared her to the Masian nobility, though some speculate her arresting melodies actually emanate magic, a dangerous prospect in the kingdom. Silence to outsiders, but understood easily enough by close companions, Sona plucks her harmonies not only to soothe injured allies, but also to strike down unsuspecting enemies. Okay, so at the core of Sona is an instrument that's possibly magic or just the music she makes with her instrument create some sort of magical abilities here. So let's go ahead and maybe find out more. Sona's earliest memories are of the Ionian monastery where she was raised in the province of Galrin. The monks, along with kind-hearted volunteers from the local villages, took in any orphans or foundlings left at the front gates and made sure that they would want for nothing. Oh, Sona's an orphan, it looks like. As a young girl, Sona was considered shy and quiet until it became apparent that she couldn't speak at all. But she was unusually thoughtful and attentive, and the other children tended to seek her out whenever they needed comfort. Their playful smiles quickly restored. So we got a mute musician. That's interesting. And Sona discovered other ways to express herself. Unlike her playmates, she had one possession when she was first found. A curiously strung instrument packed into a plain wooden case. None of the visiting musicians or teachers knew what it was. Though that did not stop several of them from attempting to procure it for themselves one way or another. What? People are trying to steal it? Instead, Sona taught herself how to play it and her simple, beautiful melodies moved even the most skeptical listener to tears of joy. However, dark times were approaching. The foreign empire of Noxus had begun landing troops in the northern provinces and the monks decided to evacuate their young charges to safety before the invasion reached Galran. Okay, so then they probably moved all to Demacia. After their caretaker struck a deal with a Demacian trader, Sona and a handful of her friends found themselves bundled onto one of the last ships to escape before the Noxian blockade of Ionia's western coast. She looked back in anguish, knowing that she would not be able to return for many years, if at all. After months at sea, they arrived in Demacia, a strange dour land where magic was widely distrusted. Oh, true. Their monks were called illuminators, and they worshipped no gods or spirits, yet still placed great value on showing kindness to strangers and the needy. So as that Sona was taken in by the Buvel family, Lord Barrett and his wife, Lestara, were prominent supporters of the Illuminator Order and renowned patrons of the arts in the great city. So she's pretty much uh, adopted by a somewhat rich family, it looks like. Sona became like a sister to their daughter, Kahina, and Lestara in particular grew very attached to her. The Damasian language was often difficult to learn, but the Bu uh, Buvels developed a personalized sign language that enabled Sona to communicate easily with her new family and their friends. Yet she yearned to express so much more. To show her appreciation to her adopted countrymen, she decided to use her gift to delight and soothe them and return to her music with renewed passion. Okay, so she like felt that this family did a lot for her for taking her in, and she's like, okay, I'm starting to like the Demacian people and things like that, so let me do something nice for them. Soon, word spread of her virtuoso talent. Her performances captivated audiences, bringing them from sorrow to bliss, from righteous martial pride to almost exquisite peace. And Lestara became intrigued by the mysterious instrument that made this possible. Yeah, so is Sona the one that's actually magical, or is it this instrument maybe she's using? Delving deep into the libraries of the Illuminator, she became she came to believe it was one of the fabled Etwals. 
wondrous artifacts dating back thousands of years before Demacia's founding and now exceedingly rare in the world. If that were true, then this was an object of magic, and Sona's preternatural connection to it was a dangerous gift indeed. The star urged her to keep it secret to avoid bringing unwanted attention from the Demacian mage seekers. Ah, okay, so the adopted mom is like, yo, that thing's magic. We gotta hide it, basically. Sona obeyed, though she wondered how something that brought people peace could be seen as a threat. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's Demacia for you. Some years later, Lord Barrett Buvel was slain fighting Noxus at the Gates of Mourning. When Kahina took up her father's blade and military commission, the heartbroken Lestara decided the time had come for Sona to return to Ionia, and the two of them withdrew from all courtly engagements to make the journey together. Oh, that's kind of nice. Lestara, you're kind of abandoning your other child, or your actual child, Kahina, though, but I guess Kahina's off to fight. In the war's aftermath, a great restoration was underway across the First Lands, but the people were much changed by what they had endured and Sona realized there was no longer any place for her there. Saying farewell to Ionia once again, she went back to Demacia with Listara. Okay, well, okay, so interesting. She ended up not liking Ionia anymore because it like had totally changed, and she's like, I was happy being in Demacia with you, okay. Even so, her chosen homeland is not without its own problems, true. In the wake of King Jarvan III's assassination, the Mage Seekers have gained significant power, and many innocent civilians or citizens are persecuted for any supposed connection to magic. Yeah, she's kind of like not welcome here, though. As a child of two wildly different cultures, Sona increasingly finds herself at odds with her family's political allegiances. With Etoile in hand, her melodies now serve not only to provide comfort, but also to defend what she knows is right and just. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of a comparison, not in the exact sense, but like, of course, I'm going to compare her to Seraphine in a sense, because she has that same idea of like, she just wants to play music because it brings happiness and peace and joy or whatever to the people that she plays it for which very much so is kind of Seraphine's thing, but she like wants to bring people together with her music. You know, it's kind of the same concept, but the thing that I see different here is Sona, it seems like at the, at the very end here, like she will also try to defend what she knows is right and just, meaning she seems like she's more of a fighter almost a little bit in the sense that like she will fight for what she thinks is right. And Seraphine, but very much so is, it doesn't seem like lore wise, like a fighter. Obviously they're both doing totally different things as well, but you know, I, of course I'm gonna compare like two musicians and, and you know, of course we got Sona being a mute and Seraphine not, but obviously being a singer. So I think there's a lot of comparisons there, but I do like, it seems like Sona is a little bit more of a fighter, but it is interesting to know that she wanted to stay in a place with her, you know, she's using a magical instrument. She wants to stay in a place where the mage seekers are gaining power and, you know, like playing her instrument could be very dangerous. So, but it, it, what she wants to do is she actually wants to make a change in Demacia. So that's interesting. All right. And our story is called One Last Show. I like this artwork. It's very, um, very colorful. That old familiar smell hit her first. Hay, strawberries, and sturdy wood. The courtyard of the Argentine Inn had a particular waft to it that brought the ache of memories long past. A hundred concerts, a thousand faces lit by lantern light, and most painful of all, a time when things were simpler and happier in Demacia, before Jarvan III's assassination, I assume. But these days, that version of her home country felt distant. Worlds away, when she spotted her old friend Etra emerging from the doorway of the inn, her breath hitched. Maybe this too was different. But Etra's eyes went wide. She shrieked with joy, and as she ran forward to wrap Sona up in her arms, Sona breathed a little sigh of relief. Some things didn't change after all. Oh, so interesting. She didn't know if Etra would come at her with joy or not, and I wonder why. You got my letter, Etra said, and squeezed her tight. Sona nodded. As Etra released her, she stood back to get a good look, still clasping Sona's hands. Someone's been traveling, she said, impressed, as if noticing Sona was on edge. Etra paused, released her hands, and slipped into the rough sign language they'd forged over a lifetime. All is well? It was a relief to be able to sign back, to be understood by someone who loved her. Yes, of course, Sona responded whether it was true or not. Missed you terribly, though. She held her hands a little lower, didn't want passersby to see the sharp gestures, the twitching fingers, and draw the wrong conclusions. Oh, wow, that's kind of scary. How long will you stay this time? As long as I can, Sona signed. You know I never could refuse an empty stage. Etra grinned, excellent. There was no audience around sunset when Sona struck her first chord, but the first few folks trickled in right away. She was standing front and center in the Argentine's concert hall, a converted barn with a bit, ra a bit of raised wood at the front to make a stage. Some of the people she could see were familiar faces. They brought their evening plans with them. Wine by the flagon, cheese in its cloth. Some wine and cheese, okay. Sona had set her etoile in center stage. The burnished gold on the front was freshly polished, gleaming. It sat on its little frame, the one she brought for Demacian performances only. To Sona's right, a man named Cal kept feet on the end's goatskin drums. 
Etra's voice joined her on the left after a moment, high and clear and smooth like water. Okay, so Etra's performing with Sona. Very cool. And then we got a, name, a guy named Cal on the drum. As they settled into their familiar rhythm, the crowd swelled. Wagons were pulled up beyond the open door of the stage hall now, horses tied to posts. Some of the men had started to sing along loudly. They were drunk faster than usual. Sona smirked over at Etra and she signed back with one hand, they missed you too. Things were tense for folks right now. They'd just lost their king and seen their country turn on itself in a single bloody year. As if to punctuate Sona's thoughts, four figures slipped into the back row of the audience, hoods pulled loose over their faces, dark blue fabric, not terribly suspicious on its own, but... One of them tilted their head up at Sona and she saw the hint of a gold mask glinting in the light. Mage Seekers. Okay, say so mage seekers usually wear a gold mask. I don't know if I've actually seen what the mage seekers look like. No, I probably have in some artwork. Sona's stomach lurched. She heard the slightest hitch in Etra's voice too, but neither of them dared look at each other right now. The only answer was to keep performing, keep singing, and hopefully keep up appearances. The next song in the set was a solo. Etra and Cal slipped backstage. This was the moment the crowd had really come to hear, and there were small murmurs and comfortable rustles in the audience as people settled in. Okay, so Sona's gonna be doing a solo. There was no name for the piece, but they all knew it regardless. It was Sona's own creation and she relaxed into it. Her fingers brushed the strings, the air teemed with silence, and then, with the pick of a single note, they were off. Her fingers danced like fireflies. The song flowed, built, faded, built again. But then something evolved in the music. There were additional layers to it, notes that should have been impossible to play simultaneously. Sona looked up and saw only smiles and closed eyes. The audience had become enamored, absorbed. It was time, the etoile had awoken. Long, twisting illusions rose up from the strings, stretching and snapping at the very air hummed. To her, they were brilliant, a language she and the instrument alone shared. No one else could see them. Okay, so we're getting an actual description of like kind of the magic that goes on here. The etoile had chosen someone. An old woman in the back of the room was thinking of her husband, a farmer, and the instrument had become throaty with the full warmth and bass of his voice. Sona could almost hear him talk. In the shapes that rapidly shifted before her, she saw the outline of his weathered face the way his cheeks crinkled when he'd smiled. But the outline morphed, the fuzzy curve of a sleeping figure. He had fallen ill and passed a month ago. A hard harvest without him, no doubt. Interesting, so she can kind of like use this to see what people are thinking about, or it can like, I don't know, something along those lines? The etoile hummed something private to Sona then, the last rasping song the man had ever sung to his wife. The notes hung in the air. She took the snatched phrases of the melody and without even having to pause, she wove it back into the song, building around it. Okay, so it's like she can like use songs from people's minds or whatever and create like notes from it or something. And then like it adds it to the song that she's playing. So like for each individual person, they can kind of like hear their own song or take something from it. I, I think that's kind of what I'm getting. When she glanced up, Sona saw the widow's eyebrows raised with recognition, tears trailing down the woman's cheeks. Sona slipped music into the woman's heart, music to warm her, music to soothe her, music to give her strength to face the year ahead. The music had reached crescendo now. She and the etoile were deep in conversation. The shapes had expanded, brilliant and ever moving, an aurora stretching across the hall. A shout shattered the song. She halted, frozen, but the shapes still drifted, no longer a secret between her and the instrument. She'd lost control. Uh-oh. The mage seekers in the back had risen, making their way down the center aisle. They were coming for her. She threw their hoods back now. The rest of the audience was still transfixed, unseeing. They hadn't yet registered what was happening. Sona took two steps back toward the archway that led out of the back of the barn. Stop, one of the mage seekers cried. They were undeniably here for her. She bolted, hefting her skirts in one hand. The etoile shuddered, broke free of its stand, and drifted after her through the air. Why hide it anymore? Oh, so wait a minute. The etoile just started following her like floating through the air, it, like she's not carrying it, it's just following her, okay. She emerged out back and into the darkness. There was an alley back there. She could flee into the woods before they spotted her. But as she reached the end of the alley, two seekers stepped into her path. She pulled up short and turned around. Maybe, no. Three more blocked her way back to the inn's door. She was trapped. If you don't resist, one of them started, but she saw the flash of Demacian steel in his hand and she heard nothing else. Behind her, footsteps. They were closing in. She backed up against the wall of the inn, all five of them now standing in front of her. She laid her fingers on the etoile. I hope Etra ran, she thought. Oh, is she about to do something crazy here? The etoile glowed. She struck a violent burst of magic. The cord shot forth from her and slammed into the seekers. The air was charged gold, sickeningly radiant. They turned away from her. She heard their groans, their broken screams, and knew it was over. 
They were dancing. All of them. They were dancing. Oh, it totally makes sense. So does she have she has a way to just make them dance via magic, essentially. They cut an eerie sight to anyone who might see. Contorted, twisting figures bent against their will like puppets being made to perform. That's actually kind of scary magic if you really think about it. Like that could be like some horror movie stuff. Like if somebody makes you dance when you don't want to. I don't know. I'm thinking of like some scary movie where they could make that either funny or it could also be like a horror movie in some aspect. It was painful. She knew that much, but she had to make them hurt. She had to make the pain the only thing they could remember. Yeah, see, exactly. That way, they couldn't remember Etra. They couldn't come after her. For pity's sake, mercy, my arm. At first, they begged her to stop, but after a moment, even that died away, and there was nothing but gurgling, the shuffle of footsteps, the creaking and snapping of joints. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, see, this is like a horror movie now. I didn't want to hurt you, she thought. I never do, but you, you're the reason home isn't home anymore. One last beat, one final encore, she strummed. The chord reached them, deep violet. They dropped to the floor instantly like discarded toys, unconscious and forgetful. And Sona disappeared into the silence of the woods. Okay, so she made them go unconscious. She didn't kill them. She's not like a murderer. And then she can also do something to make them forget, which is interesting. So this is a very magical instrument that she has here. But there's like a connection between her and and the etoile. I don't think it's just like the etoile is magic, which it obviously is, but it probably has to connect with somebody significantly, um, maybe like magic, like a magic user in some sense. Like it's gotta be somebody that can like incorporate uh, magic within themselves with the instrument. All right, cool. So basically we got a story here of like, you know, what it's like being a magic user of some sort in Demacia and you know, of course, the, the number one thing I know about Demacia is, you know, magic is not welcome there whatsoever. So it's interesting to see somebody like Sona wanting to stay there, but it's because she kind of wants to like fight. She's kind of like a revolutionary almost in a sense, where she wants to fight back and like just she thinks it's wrong, right? It's it's injustice that these mage seekers are, are coming after people that are bringing joy to like that's the whole point of this story was like she was just bringing joy to a bunch of citizens in a concert hall slash barn and you know these mage seekers were like no we're not gonna have it right very telling story about you know demacia in a sense which we we do know we've heard it a million times at this point but also very telling on what sona's um ideology is and things like that and she's not afraid like if she's back against the wall she will fight back, right? She'll make you dance until your joints are popping and you're unconscious and you don't remember anything. Very fun story. All right, let's take a look at her gameplay abilities. Interesting, we got a big like paragraph here for her passive. It is called Power Chord. Okay, I'm taking a look at the video. Accelerando, Sona gains non-ultimate ability haste permanently for her basic abilities as she uses her abilities well, up to a cap. Beyond that cap, further successful uses reduces her ultimate's remaining cooldown instead. Power Chord, every spell, few spell cast, Sona's next attack will deal bonus magic damage in addition to an additional effect based on what ability Sona last activated. Okay, so it looks like she gets like a little additional bonus magic damage based on the last ability. And then there's like this thing that basically increases her ultimate uh, ability faster or whatever. She gets it faster. Okay, that's a pretty interesting passive i would say especially the power chord aspect of it i think that's an interesting passive our right, next up is q so it is the hymn of valor sona plays the hymn of valor sends out bolts of sound dealing magic damage to two nearby enemies prioritizing champions and monsters sona gains a temporary aura that grants allies tagged by the zone bonus damage on their next attack against enemies okay okay so like basically if they're in that little zone near her they get a little bonus damage and basically she's sending out bolts of uh, magic damage cool I like that ability. I like the effect that's going on around her. And the W is Aria of Perseverance. Sona plays the Aria of Perseverance, sending out protective melodies, healing Sona and a nearby wounded ally. Sona gains a temporary aura that grants allies tagged by the zone a temporary shield. So it says it only healing Sona and a nearby wounded ally. It makes it sound like it's a singular nearby wounded ally and not multiple. But then it also says it gives them a um, temporary shield if they're all in the uh, little aura. Next up is the E, Song of Celerity. Sona plays the Song of Celerity, granting nearby allies bonus move speed. Sona gains a temporary aura that grants allied champions tagged by the zone bonus move speed. So basically, okay, so we got the shield one and the healing one. We got the shield ver or we got the um, speed movement speed version, and then we got like a little thing that gives bonus damage. So she's kind of got like the three little auras that she can give to allies, as well as dealing magic damage with this Hymn of Valor. 
are the ultimate. I think I've seen this. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think I've seen her ultimate mostly because of TFT, but it's called Crescendo. Sona plays her ultimate chord, stunning enemy champions and forcing them to dance and dealing magic damage to them. Each rank reduces the base cooldown of Sona's basic abilities. That's very cool that the ultimate and like the basic abilities kind of like coincide for her because of the that last sentence there. Each rank reduces the base cooldown. Yeah, I, and I think in TFT it's a little bit like of a bigger range maybe because it's changed for that. Or maybe it actually is just that small. I can't recall actually. But I think that's a good one. And I, that, I love that that's the story, the part of the story that we read where she literally ultimates on those five Mage Seekers and Demacia coming after her she's ultimating and making them dance which is hilarious and stunning them i like that the abilities are kind of like this aura around her because it's basically like making the concept of like you got to be able to hear the music that she's playing to kind of get like the buff from her i do like that kind of aspect of her and obviously she's like the all-around support she has like all the different kind of buffs to give her allies so very cool okay let's check out the dj sona which for some reason i've like seen this skin again i think from tft but we got a whole trailer for it it's actually like nine years old so this is an older one but let's check it out a minute and a half oh okay why is this like high quality right now they're getting me amped up already Okay. Okay, maybe I've seen this when I ran through like League of Legends cinematics. Oh yeah. What? Okay, why is this a hype skin trailer? This is kind of crazy. Oh my God, why is this song going hard too? For a nine-year-old song as well. Oh, are we moving on to some house music now? Okay. I like me some house music. Almost got like a little chill lo-fi to it too. I didn't even really watch the, the skin trailer. I'm just kind of vibing right now, to be honest. Okay. I like kind of like some drum and bass a little bit. What? Okay, hold on, hold on. That's, is that, hold on. Is that one of the best skin trailers I've seen? That might be. <laughs> I mean, I guess you don't really, it's not like a spectacular trailer in and of itself, I guess. Because, well, no, now that I scroll through it, it's pretty cool looking. It's the song, man. The song hikes, hypes me up. All right, guys, we gotta see if DJ Sona, or if Sona has a champion theme. I think DJ Sona might have its own theme. Let's check it out. All right, everybody. Well, yeah, I discovered that DJ Sona does indeed have three, um, I guess, themes, champion themes, not necessarily champion themes, but just three songs for its skin. And what's crazy is I actually know like half, at least half of them, but like half of the music artists that they used for this. I mean, nine years ago is when these songs came out. It was a different time. I think EDM was kind of like popping off a little bit like nine years ago, like kind of just getting big. It's obviously a mainstay now, but the Bass Nectar, the reason why I, I, I mean, I recognize Bass Nectar because I was listening to Bass Nectar probably nine years ago, right? When I think it was kind of like getting into the, like into mainstream a little bit. Okay, so each of these songs is about four minutes long. Let's just vibe for the next 12-ish minutes, guys. Just vibe with me. Let's listen to these songs. I don't know if there's going to be any visuals going along with it, but let's just go ahead and uh, vibe out here for a little bit. And let's see what the three differences are between like each song, you know? So Bass Nectar and Renhold. Bass Nectar goes hard on the bass, obviously. So this is probably going to be a very dubstepy song. I'm no like, listen, this isn't like a music react channel, so... I'm not gonna be able to like describe what's going on too much in these songs, but I'll try to tell you which one is my favorite of the three. How about we do that? I'll tell you my favorite after we listen to all three of them. Pretty cool that they got like some big names for these songs too. <clears throat> but I mean, nine years ago, League of Legends was like, I mean, popular as hell as it is now, so. OK. 
Okay. I'm not hearing like that typical bass nectar like twist yet, I feel like. He kind of has like a staple sound. I don't know about the Ren holder person. This reminds me of like the, um, what image is like this where it just had like this in the middle and then like, I guess on like YouTube videos where it would just show like the, the music lines and everything and the bass. I feel like it's got to be building up slowly, right, to a big drop. I feel like that's that nine years ago. That's what the dubstep songs generally did. I feel like it's changed a bit, but yeah, I hear it building. Here we go. Oh, okay. The drop was a melody. Okay. That's different. I like it. This feels like, um, hmm. What would I do while listening to this song? Clean the house? <laughs> oh, oh, I like the change up. We're getting faster. Okay. Okay. I like those little drum stingers. All right, we're ramping up again. I can feel it. This might be the true drop coming up. These songs are for sure probably going to be copy copyrighted, but that's okay. I want to hear from you guys, though, what your favorite is out of the three. I feel like a lot of you probably listen to all of these, unless you're not really into EDM, which I get. Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay. That goes pretty hard, man. This makes me like Sona more, even though, like... This isn't really Sona, I guess. Like the, the original Sona. Still pretty cool. Definitely make, oh, oh, I like the effects. Whoa. Yeah, it just makes me like Sona more. I mean, Sona could be all genres. Even country music, how about that? go time to slow it down cool very nice okay i like that one that was a good one hopefully the other two are just as hyped to be honest with you all right let's move on to the next one okay next up we have the crystal method dada life uh this one's called kinetic i don't know the crystal method but i do know dada life so uh let's listen to this one Okay, I think this is already like kind of signature Dada life. Like right off the bat. I don't know, it's been a minute. And I don't know Crystal Method. This could be like Crystal Method sound right now. Okay, we're already starting off pretty fast on this one. Last one was a little bit like slower and bass heavy. This one's going fast. Different colors as well. Ooh, okay. Mmm. This one's getting a little bit more melodic than the last as well already. Accentuating on the melody more too, instead of the bass. Oh, okay, I like the build up. I like the build up. How's the drop gonna be though? Oh, oh! I like that they're making it longer, actually. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. I like the melody in this one. This one's got more of a melody versus the bass on the last. Feels kind of happier, right? Because of the melody, I feel like. Oh, now we're going bass. Okay, okay. I don't know if I have a clear winner just yet between the two, to be honest with you. Ooh. Oh, I like that sound. I like what they're doing with that. Okay. Ooh. This one has some interesting yet weird kind of noises with it. But I kind of like it. Like, it's got a lot of layers, you know? Feels like it's more layers than the last one. So maybe I think I've, so far, I think I actually am liking this one a little bit more. Okay. Got another build here. Is it gonna go, usually the second drop is even harder, right? Do, 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 do. Yeah, see, like, I could, like, kind of hum to this one. I like it. This one's got more dancey vibes, too. Like that sound right there is so interesting. Man, I can't believe I didn't know about these songs. I'm pretty like into EDM. Um, I don't know what I was doing nine years ago that I might have missed these songs. Ooh, I like the sound here at the end too. Ooh, I like that one, I think, a little bit better than the Bass Nectar one. That one was very cool. Uh, let's. All right, we got one more. Let's do the last one. All right, last one is called Ethereal. And now Pretty Lights have actually seen live myself, so I do know Pretty Lights. So this one, Pretty Lights himself doesn't do, like, very bassy stuff. So I wonder what this one's going to be like. But I, I don't know about this other artist. They might be more bassy. <clears throat> Pretty Lights reminds me of, like, if you guys have heard of Justice, that's another like group. They both were kind of like the music I listen to. Like Pretty Lights and Justice are kind of like older, to be honest with you, older than nine years ago. See, this is already not even starting off bassy. It's gonna be more like a vibe, you know? You Zoomers out there know what I'm talking about, come on. Ethereal. Obviously, this one's got to feel that way, too, I feel like. I think the last one felt like kinetic, right? That was a good title for that track. I'm, I'm really liking this so far. I don't know where it's going to go next. It's feeling... Oh, this feels very pretty lights, which is cool. Hold on. Ooh, I got like the the drums going back and forth in the headphones right now. Somebody just using like a little hand drum, it sounds like. Okay, here we go. Okay, now this like little warble sound that we're getting, I feel like that's the other artist. Maybe that's like their staple. But like the melody and stuff is kind of like pretty lights and like the, the slow vibe and everything. Yeah, like this noise here, that sounds like a piano and stuff. That's very pretty lights. Okay. This is way different than the other two. Uh, but I, I mean, I love it. 
but I could see why some people might not like this one, right? Because it's not as like bass heavy maybe, or like hype as the others. This one's more chill. I think I like Sona's head the most on this one though. Like the, the graphic here in the middle, I like the colors. Where's it gonna go now? I hope they add something, like another, they gotta add like another layer, I feel like. I kind of feel like it is missing a layer here. Well, maybe not though, because what they're going for is being accomplished. Oh, hold on, okay. They added that other layer though, but it's still like kind of chill. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, this this is real good here, the second half right now. This is like, while I'm editing or something for the YouTube video, this is like something I could listen to, you know what I mean? It's kind of like that lo-fi, like doing work while listening to lo-fi, but this is like a different vibe though. I just realized I probably need to listen to more uh, Pretty Lights again. They added a lot more layers to this now. Mm, okay, I love that one because, because of like how it makes me feel, right? It's obviously not as hype as the others. So I could see generally maybe like the, uh, the majority of you might like one of the others more like the bass nectar one or, um, the kinetic one, but there's something about this one. That's just so like, it relaxes me almost. Right. Uh, but that being said, I think personally in this moment, right? Like in this moment currently that I'm in, in the state that I'm in, I feel like I did vibe the most with kinetic. So I think kinetic is my favorite of the three, but like catch me on another day, ethereal right here might be my favorite, right? Or catch me on another day and then the base nectar one, I forget what that one's called, but like that one might be my favorite, right? So I think they're all very good. I think they all have their strong suits. But right now, like the kinetic one had like some really dancey vibes to it and I was really feeling that one. Let me know though from you guys, I wanna hear like what your favorite one was. If Obviously if you like all three, let me know that you like all three. And how hype were you when these uh, three dropped because I feel like this is pretty a, a pretty big deal for like a champion to come out with a skin and then like three songs to also drop with it. Like that's a pretty big deal because that's not something I've seen anytime recently for League. All right, let's take a look at the skins next. We have a decent amount here. It's quite a bit actually. And I just realized that Sona is actually an older champion. For some reason, I thought Sona was more like a recent champ. By recent, I mean like maybe like five years or so. But no, Sona is like an OG League of Legends champion. Okay, so we have the original skin here. I think it's very good. Obviously, the original designs are always, in my opinion, very, very good. I don't think I've had any complaints about any previous original designs. Let's go ahead and dive into the next one. Next one is called Muse. Now, I feel like the artwork here isn't doing it justice, so I want to view this one in 3D. Okay, yeah, this is like, you know, Greek goddess kind of vibes, of course, right? I actually think that's really good. I don't know if I like her hair as much, but you know what I mean? Like, I think the theme at its core is pretty good. All right, next up is the Pentakill one. Oh, okay, we have to look at this one in 3D. I might really like the Pentakill one. I didn't realize she was in Pentakill. Okay, full screen this one. Here's the Pentakill one. I love the chains going out from around her and the red hair. I mean, it's very good Pentakill skin. I think the um, Etoile is awesome as well. Is this supposed to be like a... Raven? No. What is that on the front? I'm not sure what that is exactly, but it looks very badass. All right. So far, I do want to keep this one in the top three for now. We'll see if we get any cooler ones, but I mean, it's a pentakill one, so it's very good. Next up is Silent Night. Oh, a Christmas one. Okay. 3D again. Eh, we don't get too many like holiday Christmas themed skins as often, I feel like. So this one's pretty fun. I like the wreath in the front. It's a very fun one, but I feel like it could actually be a little bit better. Like I don't like her purple flowy dress. I do like the etoile itself and then the hair is okay, 
But uh, I think it's a fun one because it we don't see too many like holiday Christmas type skins. So I think this is good, but it's not top three. All right, next up is, is this Gukin? Gukin? I don't even know how to say it. I like the red one the most. I actually really like this one. The Etoile is a little weird looking, so maybe not as much. Like I like the dress and everything on it. Uh, that one's a question mark for me. We'll have to move on. We'll, we'll maybe come back to that one. Okay, we have arcade version. Okay, they gave her like no clothes in this apparently uh okay i feel like i love the etwall because it's just like a game pad with a keyboard on the left hand side which is kind of funny actually i really love her hair and like the rainbows that are coming out from her those are really fun that one's another question mark i think i might come back to that one if we can't decide what our top threes are all right here's dj sona i mean this one actually has like in-game uh, footage of the three different colors i mean i have to go with the dj sona skin for the mere fact that we got three songs from it, I mean, it's very good as well. Like, look at the cool design of the Etoile on all of them. It's insane. It's like a huge DJ set. I, hmm, what's my favorite though? Let's try to pick our favorite. I actually think I like, I think I'm going to go with the Kinetic one again. I think this is the Kinetic one, or maybe this is, but I like this one the most, but they're all very good. Next up is Sweetheart. Ooh, I love the art on this one. Okay, we gotta look at the 3D. So I'm assuming Valentine's again, right? Like I always think that these are supposed to be like Valentine's ones, but maybe not. Hmm, I love her hair. I like the white hair. I like the dress. Actually, I like the Etoile more than I like the dress. Other than that though, there's nothing that's like standing out to me in it. So I like it, but it's not staying. I want to get like a dark Sona. I think we might get, get one here soon. Let's see. Odyssey. Oh, I love the artwork, but what does it look like? What the heck? Okay, this I have to look in 3D. It's like a futuristic. It reminds me of, this is going to be a deep cut for some people, but it reminds me of like the Protoss from StarCraft 2. Like it, it's got kind of like that sleek design to it. All right, let's look at the 3D of it. I don't know. The artwork is great. Oh, she's like very interesting looking. Oh, this one might be another question. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. It looks cool, but like it also looks weird at the same time. Do you guys know what I'm saying? All right, next we have PsyOps. Ooh, now this one looks dark in the artwork. What the heck? She's got four, mo six monitors. <laughs> Yo, she's got all the monitors she needs. So PsyOps, she's like a security officer, basically, is what I, the vibe I'm getting right here. She's Is that like a visor going to her head of like all the different monitors? I feel like that's what's going on here. This is another like weird one. Like there's nothing aesthetically bad looking about it, but it also isn't anything like aesthetically that great about it. I don't know, it's also kind of weird to me. Let's keep going. I guess I get it though, because Sona's a little bit weird to kind of make a skin for because, you know, the Etwal, they're trying to do some weird stuff with it and do some uh, like creative things, but I don't know if I'm really digging them so far. Okay, what do we have next? Pentakill Lost Chapter. Oh, this might be better than the other one. Ooh, it's not as dark, which like the other one is more like metal, right? I think this is more like still dark, right? Like, especially with the original here with the red hair, I think it's still dark, but it's like modern metal a little bit. Is, is that like, I feel like that's what I want to say about it. It feels like it's a little bit more modern metal. Guys, I don't know what it is. So far, I'm liking the original Pentakill better and then the DJ Sona so far, but let's keep going. Okay, Star Guardian might be our savior here. This is a good skin. This is fantastic. I love her hair. And it looks so good with every single color so far. Oh yeah, Star Guardian here to rescue us. This is great. I love the Etoile instrument. I love the way her hair is. And I love all the different colors. I don't see a single bad color combination throughout all of these Star Guardians. That is going in the top three. I don't think that's going to be taken out by anything, but let's keep going. All right, we have Immortal Journey. Have we seen an Immortal Journey before? I don't know. Okay. I love the purple hair. Okay. It's giving, I don't know what it's giving princess. I don't know. I like it. It's giving kind of like, okay. You guys know those like random anime game ads that you get, or you guys know those like random ads you get for like mobile games. If you're on YouTube or like on TikTok or whatever, right? I feel like 
this would be a character from one of those random mobile games. That's what it, she kind of looks like. Not saying that's a bad thing. This skin is actually fire. I'm just giving it a hard time because I think Star Guardian's better because we just saw that one. And I'm like comparing the two. Although this purple, oh, the purple looks so good. I still think Star Guardian's better. Uh, that's a good skin, but that's what it reminded me of, like those mobile games. And last but not least, we have the Prestige Immortal Journey. Man, the artwork is like absolutely insane, of course. But all right, let's look at the 3D of this. We might like the Prestige version better here. Oh, it is very good. Ah, uh, I mean, I love it. I like it. There's no complaints about it. Uh, I guess, you know what? My complaint about it is I like her with the long flowing hair instead of like in the two buns on top with just the little tassels, I guess. But they still look good. I'm going to stick with my top three, guys. I want to hear from you, though. Let me know, of course, what your three favorite skins are for Sona. Okay, so I'm sticking with the Pentakill one. I'm sticking with the DJ Sona one, and I'm sticking with Star Guardian. Okay, the little bit of trivia says a power chord consists of double of a double root and the fifth, often heard in rock music. A hymn, which is a Greek song of praises, is a type of song usually associated to religion. While Hymn of Valor's aura is active, the game's theme can be heard. Oh, is that still true? An aria is a type of melody usually associated with operas. Right, okay, I didn't even think about that when we were reading the abilities earlier. Crescendo, uh, Italian for growing, refers to the amplification of volume in music, right? In-game crescendo triggers both a stun and the target's dance emote simultaneously. Sona was deemed overpowered slash obnoxious for ultra rapid fire in April of 2014. Oh my God, that was 10 years ago, literally as of right now, and was ultimately disabled in non-custom games. The ultra rapid fire. Hmm. At one time, Sona held the title of lowest base armor. Sona's uh, Dutch German title, Die Virtuosen, is the feminine derivative of Jin's title, Der Virtuoso. Uh, Virtuose. And then enemy champions hit by Crescendo will be forced to dance while they are stunned. All right, we're on the fandom wiki for Sona now. We're passing up the early life stuff because we've already read about it. There's a little bit of things here in the contemporary history, especially a sentence here that I don't think I um, paid attention to, or maybe we didn't hear about it when we reacted to Rise, but it says at some point Sona would aid Rise against the Navori Brotherhood so he could gather a world rune. Maybe I did read about that, but it was like just a one sentence thing, kind of like it is here. Okay, so that's it for contemporary history. Not much is really known about Sona, which is kind of interesting because I feel like like, you know, there is kind of a mysteriousness behind her background being an orphan and kind of where this um, instrument came from. It's interesting that I don't think they've done anything related to the lore of her instrument anymore. You know, they could do like a whole slew of like magical instruments in the world of Runeterra. I think that would actually be kind of cool or something. But so far, we only know there's an etwal. And I guess in the story, I think we read that there might be multiple magical etwals because the mother Lestara was like reading about them. But other than that, they don't really go into the detail about like where the instrument came from. And it doesn't seem like they're going into detail about like where uh, Sona really comes from. Appearance, Sona is a slender pale skinned woman with long blue hair and yellow at the ends. Her robes are a long elegant gown with a distinctive palette of blue, dark blue, turquoise, and gold. The most charismatic ornaments of her attire are the golden diadem on her head between her hair. She also has an etoile that floats along with her. Oh right, and it also like follows her, doesn't it, right? Personality. Sona is a very graceful and elegant young woman. She best and primarily expresses herself through her music, although she also has the ability to express her thoughts and communicate with others via telepathic speech. Is that true? Which is best known for its melodious nature. This highly reflects her gracious and refined personality. Sona is a very caring and gentle woman that helps out others in need and comforts those in need. Abilities, we have magical bonding. Sona has a special bond with her instrument, Etwal. It seems to possess limited sentience and cannot be removed too far from Sona as it will teleport back to her. She is also the only person in the world who can play it and can understand its behavior. Well, as far as we know, right? Sound magic, Sona is able to send forth blasts of sound energy and create shields. Empathy magic, empathy magic is new. Sona and her instruments are able to tap into people's memories and emotions and play music that will touch people's souls or that have special meaning to them. She's also capable of controlling people's emotions and actions, forcing mage seekers to dance when they were hunting her. She can also heal others with her magic. Synesthesia, Sona is able to see music as a visual stimulus rather than just sonorous. 
Okay, is that an actual thing um, in real life? I feel like there's something like that in real life. It says it's a fancy name for when you experience one of your senses through another. Okay, interesting. For example, you might hear the name Alex and see green. Okay, so we have relations. We don't have too many, but uh, it is referencing some of the ones that we saw on the biography page. But let's see, it says the Bouvel house. Sona is the adoptive daughter of Lord Barrett and Lady Listara from House Bouvel. Oh, I didn't know Lord Barrett had his own card. Very cool. An adopted sister of Kahina. She is very close to all of them, especially her mother, Listara. They also know that she is magical and protect her from the mage seekers. Yeah, it's very awesome that she was adopted into a, like, loving household in Damasia. That's really awesome. Irelia. Sona met Irelia at some point when she came back to Ionia. Okay, so when Sona was in Ionia for just a tad little bit... She must have met Irelia and she was like turned off by her. She's like, all right, I'm going back to Demacia. And then we have Tarek. She met Tarek before his exile. Okay, we don't know anything about him other than he's from Targon. Uh, so yeah, I don't know anything about that. And I wonder why she met him or how she met him. And then it says for Rise, during the events of Call of Power, Sona traveled with Rise to the Harana Monastery after the Noxian invasion and fought the Navori Brotherhood who ambushed them. Okay, that might be a story or something that we didn't read about, or maybe it appears in a comic or something. Not sure. And let's see, what do we have here? We have the biography, which we read, and we read one last show, but it looks like there's another one called Fragile Legacies um, that has um, a bunch of other people in it, including Quinn, Tiana, um, some of her family, Jarvan the Third, Jarvan the Fourth, Kale, and Morgana. So not sure what that one is about. Sona is possibly in her early to mid 20s. Her etoile is an ancient magical musical instrument that was made thousands of years ago. Her adopted parents led a hunt party that hired Quinn and her brother Caleb to kill a giant tusk for. Oh, interesting. The events led to Caleb's death. Later, Lestara sponsored Quinn to be a knight as a repayment for saving her husband's life. Okay, so there's like a little bit of a, like a connection there with Quinn. I guess that might be what that other story is about. Her adopted father died in the Battle of the Gates of Morning, the loss of which led to Jarvan IV being captured by the Noxian army. Her adoptive sister Kahina introduced Lux to the Illuminators. Oh, there's a lot of connections here. Jin sees Sona as an art rival, stating that his form of art leaves longer, more lasting imprints, though she doesn't know about him. Interesting. Well, of course, Jin, of all people, is going to know of another person that's involved in the arts, right? And music and art in any sense. So, but he obviously probably sees himself as a superior, of course. Lux and Ezreal are fans of her performance. Swain is also interested in her etoile and potentially a fan. Yeah, so we had the quote from Swain at the very beginning of this reaction, which was interesting to me. It, it's kind of odd to have his quote be what we have, but of course she's a mute. And then of course we have Lux and Ezreal um, being fans of her, which is awesome. All right, everybody, this is kind of funny, but I honestly didn't even think about it until we got here in this moment. But what are these special interactions even going to be? Because Sona's mute. So hold on. We have six minutes of Sona special interactions for League of Legends. I didn't see anything for Legends of Runeterra. So that just leads me to believe that there's nothing whenever you use Sona and Legends of Runeterra. Maybe like little musical sounds or something. What are we going to get here? Is it just going to be people interacting with Sona more than Sona reacting to them? Like, I'm very curious. We got six minutes of these. So, yeah, I have no idea what we're going to get. Here we go. Am I supposed to know this person? Is he a fan? Okay, so she is kind of like telepathy-wise is speaking. Is that how we're doing this? Eh, okay. She's wondering if Jin is a fan. No, I think he's a rival more than anything. Did he want four autographs? I don't understand. I don't either. Wait, why does he want four autographs? Okay, let's keep going. Fatal stakes, but the songs, they can't be real. Mm, they're real. Is that Aurelia? I haven't seen her since the restoration. Okay. Okay, so that's how we know that she's seen her before. Why won't Jarvan act? All it would take is a single decree. Hmm. This is her wanting change a in the Masia. And a mage wouldn't want to be her. True. <laughs> I love that she knows that. And where has Rise been? Hunting for more world ending relics? Hmm. These are kind of just like her inner oh, thoughts. Is it's interesting. Grand General a fan? Oh, okay. So she might be misinterpreting. 
Do we think, okay, I want to hear from you guys. Do you think Swain is actually a fan of her music or is he more just a fan of her instrument and wants to know more about it? Silas, he hasn't I guess it could be both. And my answer is still no. Interesting. It's because, okay, my guess is Silas tried to recruit her, right? Because she kind of has the same goals as Silas, but a non-violent um, role in that. So I can see why Silas reached out to her. That's interesting. There's no it's mention of it in the fandom. Derek hasn't changed. And bad. It's both. Hmm. Okay. There's so much pain in Shin Zhao's heart. Why? Hmm. Okay, we don't know anything about Shin Zhao, so you guys let me know about that one. When fields lie calm and wind stand still, run home. Hmm. Sorry, Garen, but I can't help if I'm locked up. Hey, okay. <clears throat> I don't think Ionia will be rushing to invite me back. Hmm, not if you killed her. A single decree, and he just wouldn't do it. Oh, dang, she's getting a little sassy with Jarvin the Fourth. Don't worry, Lux. One day, our kind will be free. Our kind. I like that she resonates with Lux, of course. Those artifacts can't really end the world, Rise. Right? Mm hmm Well... Good. Mages have enough problems without you, Silas. <laughs> Silas, you're just a problem, apparently. Get up, Tarek. You're chewing the scenery. <laughs> I like how she says it, like sarcastically We're almost. Both a long way from home, Shin Zhao. Rest easy. Hmm. You guys let me know about Shin Zhao if there's anything I need to know about him. Just keep smiling and maybe they'll go away. <laughs> huh. Sounds like a personal problem. Oh my god, that's kind of funny. I want to use that one. Accurate, like a metronome. Hmm. Oh, we haven't gotten using ward special interactions in a while. Every note is important. That's true. I think so. Keep an eye out for music snobs. <laughs> That's really funny. Just setting up before the next song. Okay. Gotta set up the equipment. It's like a little usher. <laughs> Hold the laugh. She's having a good time. You look out for me, and I'll look out for you. Okay. That that pretty much, I feel like, sums up Sona a little bit. Remember to wait for your cue. I mean, I don't want to sum her up in one sentence, but... Oops. Lost myself for a minute. Oh, respawn, okay. That's something somebody would say when a they're playing music, encore? right? And then, like, start playing it wrong exists. notes or something. Okay. Encore. Once more with feeling I feel like that's a reference to something hmm. <laughs> I can never shake the nerves before a big performance mm. I bet you there are some music artists like that I for never sure. could refuse an empty stage not even this one okay <sighs> curtains up I'm ready okay I like the creative like musical uh, performer lines here cruel. Until that changes, I'll never stop playing. Ah, uh, okay. That more sums up Sona, I would say. Magic is like a song. It's woven into everything. Hmm. Waiting. Okay, I kind of like that. I like her view this on that. This is no ordinary instrument. Right. More like an old friend. See, I want to know more about this instrument. Okay. My music warms old souls and soothes hardened hearts. Mm -hmm. It is my greatest joy. I think that that's awesome. When a I'm gonna pause. Matt so I, I think it's always like whenever you can create art in some sense, whether it be music or you know like paintings or whatever, right? And like people get something out of it that brings them joy. I think that's such a great feeling, personally. History is the first step. The rest is what you do with it. Okay. Art bridges the gaps between mm. people. Governments, not so much. Wow. That's pretty deep, Sona. Okay. 
Strings move, and people dance in time with the memories. Very cool. Demacia is my home, but I'll never forget Ionia. Yeah, I'm very curious why she left Ionia. I feel like they didn't really dive deep into that. Man, I wish we had more, guys. All right, yeah, so I, like I said, I really wish they dove a little bit more into, like, why when she returned to Ionia was it really not, like, she, like, wasn't feeling the vibe anymore or something. And she's like, this really isn't my home. Maybe it's because she grew up mostly in Demacia. Like, obviously, she was, she was in that temple for a little while in Ionia. But, like, she has a loving family in Demacia, and she's probably grown accustomed to living in Demacia. So maybe that's all it was. I don't know. Or she, I know it said something like, after the Noxian invasion, it like Ioni had changed. And so maybe it just like was so different from what she used to know that she's just like, this isn't it for me. Maybe I'll come back later, right? Okay, so yeah, so these voice lines, right? Please correct me if I'm wrong and I'm sorry if I'm being stupid, but it's basically like the telepathy version of what she of, of like how she's communicating even though she's not actually communicating with any of these champions because we're not hearing them respond back or anything is this just more like inner thoughts actually it's got to be maybe just inner thoughts which is why i'm kind of interested to know why we don't have any legends of runeterra voice lines i didn't see any videos for it all right guys i find a few more voice lines but it's mostly like people reacting to sona and i kind of want to hear what people have to say when they find sona or react to her because I think it's a little interesting for them to react to, you know, mute Sona. So let's go ahead and listen to some of these. Your music lacks the cruelty of a masterpiece. Mm. Step out of my light. They call it background music. He's calling Sona Did background music. Four autographs? I don't understand. Okay. Your work will be forgotten. I am ahead of my time. Ah. You should learn the power of silence. Yo, he's very competitive when it comes Fair to the art. Mistakes, but the songs, they can't be real. Uh. Sona, I'm your biggest fan. Okay. I even know what an equal is. Ah. Wait, how does Lux know that? Hunting for more world-ending relics. Discord is the best chord, Sona. Mm. You traveled across the world to die for someone else's king. Fortissimo. Okay, cool. For you, Sona. Oh, I like that one. You make me glad I don't have ears. Whoa, Maokai. Oh, Sona, your song is so wow. Oh, see, now this is what I wanted to see. Seraphine and Sona. No music, only silence. Mm. Your soul sings for a fallen world, Sona. Oh, interesting. Cool. Okay. I like getting those little interactions, you know, just a little snippet because I want to see how people react to them, even though we don't get Sona reacting to them. It's just cool to see what people think of Sona, right? Okay. Overall, I did really enjoy some of these interactions. I'm a little curious about some of them. So please let me know in the comments, like a little bit, like more description. So like the first one is the one about the four autographs with Jin. I'm not sure what that's referencing. It's been a long time since I reacted to Jin. I need to get back to him because I feel like there's a lot more to Jin obviously then I've taken a look at we got the fiddlestick stuff I pretty much understood that she's like oh are the songs true then because she's seeing fiddlesticks in front of her uh Irelia we understand Jarvin the fourth so she's really pushing like she's getting a little political in a sense but not necessarily but like she's really like Jarvin the fourth is the leader of Demacia currently right in our you know in, in the world of Runeterra at this moment and she's like just put a decree out man magic isn't bad but I don't see that being anything that's going to change anytime soon. I haven't reacted to Jarvin the Fourth. He might be kind of interesting to get into because, you know, as the leader of Demacia, I'm sure there's a lot of interesting stuff there. We obviously have his father. I don't know. There's a lot I probably still need to learn about Jarvin the Fourth. And this kind of intrigued me to learn more about him because of like Sona's idea of what Jarvin the Fourth should be doing. So I kind of want to know what is Jarvin the Fourth doing, right? Uh, the Rise stuff we understood. The Swain thing, like I said, I want to hear you guys' take on what Swain really wants. I feel like it's straight up just he's interested in her instrument a little bit and maybe like where it comes from. And of course, when you're really, when you're interested in the instrument itself, you're obviously going to be interested in the person that owns it and uses it as well. And this was actually a, a little bit of a surprise here. I didn't realize that Silas had asked Sona. I'm assuming not for like love or anything but he probably asked her to join in the fight against Amasia and like the mage seekers and Garen and all them right so uh and the Sona is not a violent person she's more of a defensive person but she does kind of want the same things as Silas not in the sense of Silas and his violent ways or anything like that but 
you know, just for magic to be more acceptable in Demacia. So I get it. And then anything related to Tarek, you guys will have to let me know. I haven't had a time to react to him yet. He will be eventually later in the future. I don't think anybody's really recommended to him at all. I know he's just supposed to be like some good looking guy in Targon, but apparently he's been not exiled. I don't know. You guys let me know. I liked the little creative voice lines that we got with some of like, you know, the things that like a musical performance artist would think of, or some of the lines like the curtains up one, things like that. When she was putting the wards down, those were very fun and kind of like familiar and what a musical artist might like think about or say. So I really liked those. I like it when Riot gets creative with that kind of stuff. All right. So Sona is one of the older champions, right? So based on what I know of Sona, she's 13 plus years old at this point, which is interesting to know that she hasn't really been featured in much. I don't know what else they could really feature her in related to like Demacia or like lore wise, because I'm a little interested what they could do with her. I want to hear from you guys, like what you think you would see Sona doing in the future or what is Sona going to be doing at all? Because I feel like they haven't touched the lore in terms of like what Sona could be doing, right? It seems like she's just kind of hanging out in Demacia and just hiding because she's a magic user. I want to see more about the instrument. Like they could have done anything related to lore to the instrument. And I want to know more about this thing, right? So I'm hoping maybe they release more information on the Etoile and then maybe that information leads to like wanting to discover more things about other stuff, magic related or magical instruments. Maybe there's more out there, you know, things like that. Like that kind of interests me the most. And then a little bit like Sona's background. Maybe we'll get to know her parents in the future. I don't know, maybe like, out of nowhere, her parents are actually alive and we find out where that magical instrument came from. Like maybe her mom dropped her off at the orphanage with the instrument because they were on the run and they thought it'd be too dangerous if they kept Sona and the instrument with them. You know what I mean? Like they could do anything with that. So I'm a little curious to know what they might do with Sona in the future. They might not touch her though because she's kind of fine sitting where she is at the moment but i want to hear from you guys though like what your theories are that they could do with sona in the future all right guys i think that's gonna be it i think the highlight of this reaction for me were obviously the special interactions that we got from sona it's interesting to get into her brain a little bit and then of course the three dj sona songs that we got those are super hype those dj sona songs were like nine years old so that's pretty crazy that they came out that long ago and i kind of hadn't even heard of them because i like those music artists in general but those were probably the two biggest highlights for me for this reaction. As always, guys, please leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next reaction. Peace, guys.